Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to learn about VORs and how to navigate using them in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So first of all, what is a VOR? Well, it stands for VHF Omnidirectional Range. It sounds like a lot, but VHF part is just the specific range of frequencies that the VOR transmits on, VHF. You may have heard that before from things like analog television signals, FM radio signals, and so on. VORs just happen to use that same range of radio frequencies. And the O in VOR stands for omnidirectional. That means just in all directions. So this equipment, the VOR, it actually emits in 360 degrees, and we can use these radio frequencies, tune into them, and the equipment inside our aircraft will let us fly to and from these VORs on a specific heading. And here on skyvector.com, I have the world VFR map pulled up. And this blue compass rose represents the area around a VOR. So whenever you see this blue compass rose, you know that a VOR is in the middle of it. So here's one here called the San Marcos VOR near Santa Barbara. Over here to the west, we have the Morro Bay VOR that's next to the San Luis Obispo Airport. And then over here, we have the Fellows VOR. This is on a mountain range over here and is not specifically next to any airport. So let's talk about how a VOR works in terms of navigating. So the easiest way to think about VORs is to think about them as a giant wheel. And the center of the wheel is the VOR itself, but the radio transmissions coming from the wheel are the spokes. And there are 360 spokes coming from the center, radiating from the center and we call those each a radial. And you can think of each one of these spokes almost like its own highway. And you can choose to fly on one of these if you want to, from the VOR or to the VOR. So let's pretend that we're flying from the exact center of the wheel, the fellow's VOR, on a 090 heading with no wind. We would say that we are tracking the 090 radial outbound, which means from the fellow's VOR. We could also turn around and fly from the outside straight to the fellow's VOR, tracking the 090 radial inbound. So if our plane is located here, which radial are we on? Okay, well, we draw the line. Okay, we're on the 030 radial. Cool. What if our plane is over here, but we're heading west? What radial are we on? Well, we're still on the 300 radial. We just happen to be flying to the west. That doesn't mean that we're not on the radial. We may be choosing to not track the radial out or inbound, you know, fly perfectly on that spoke or highway. But at any moment, we are on a specific radial as long as we're in range of the VOR. And when we're flying a VOR-based flight path, we will be choosing which radial we want to fly on, inbound or outbound, each leg of our flight. So let's go ahead and plan a flight from San Luis Obispo down here to the Santa Barbara Airport. And we see there are two other VORs near the Santa Barbara Airport. So what we're going to do is go ahead and plan this by first right-clicking on San Luis Obispo, adding that by clicking the plan button. And in the flight plan up here, we can see that's set as our departure. Then down here, I'm going to right-click on Santa Barbara Airport and click plan, and that sets it as our destination. So this line here, the magenta line, this represents what we would fly if we were just doing a direct route using GPS. So how do we navigate this using VORs? Well, we know the VORs have a limited range, and we know what we can do with VORs is fly precisely to one of them on a specific radial that leads to or from the VOR. So I'm going to go ahead and first pick this VOR right next to us. Morro Bay VOR is right next to the airport we're departing from. We will definitely be able to tune into it and be within range from it. And then we can see that if we just use that one VOR, we could potentially get all the way to Santa Barbara just by flying the 121 radial from the Morro Bay VOR and flying on that for 67 miles. And then we would see the Santa Barbara airport. Now, Tracking 67 miles might be challenging. It's nice to have some more points that we get to. 
So I would like to just add another point so we know when we get close enough to Santa Barbara. And this also will make it a little safer for us in the case that we lose the signal of the Morro Bay VOR. You know, 67 miles doesn't sound like a lot if we know that they can work for up to 150 or 200 miles. But say I'm not super familiar with the terrain or I've never used the VOR all the way to Santa Barbara. So what I could do to be safe is just add another VOR to my flight plan. So I'm going to pick the Gaviota VOR and then go ahead and hit plan there as well. So in SkyVector, sometimes it'll pick um, like a departure for you, a departure um, procedure. I don't want that. So I'm double clicking on, on this Avila 4 and I'm removing it to make sure that uh, it doesn't try to use that. And then this T261 also got added. I'm going to get rid of that as well and hit enter. And you can see that it brings back this calculated course of 126 degrees. And that represents the 126 radial that will fly outbound from the VOR. Step one is to depart from San Luis Obispo and tune into the Morro Bay VOR. So that is 112.4. And we're going to set that up in our navigation radio. We're going to take the 126 radial outbound. So we're going to fly outbound on the 126 radial until we get in range of the Gaviota VOR. Now, once we get in range of the Gaviota VOR and pass it, we want to fly outbound on the 101 radial, and that'll take us directly to Santa Barbara. So this is the flight plan we're going to start with. We're going to load in using the Cessna 152, and we're going to fly this. All right, so here we are at the San Luis Obispo Airport on the ramp. We are in the Cessna 152, and if you haven't seen the inside of this aircraft, it's probably much simpler than what you're used to seeing. There's no Garmin uh, GPS in here, there's no GPS at all, and there's no autopilot. So all we have to go off of are our two navigation radios right here, and we're going to use the navigation radio number one, which is coupled to this instrument right here, which is called the CDI, or Course Deviation Indicator. So the first thing we're going to do is put in the two radio frequencies we'll be using on this flight, and those two are the two VOR nav frequencies. So right here we're going to put in the Morro Bay VOR. That's the first one we're going to use as we leave the San Luis Obispo area. And so now to swap to that frequency and make it active, you just hit this little swap button right here. That'll move standby to the active frequency. And as soon as we do that, you'll see the CDI change. The needle has moved to the left. It now says nav, and it's lit up right here. And then this little flag shows up, this little arrow that says from on it. And we'll get into what that means in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and change our standby frequency to the second VOR we're going to use, which is the Gaviota VOR. So we put 113.8 in our standby frequency right here. So back in Sky Vector, if we remember up here, we had moved this waypoint out here just so we could see the radial more clearly. And actually, if we move it out of the way, we can actually see that this teal line right here actually also refers to the 126 radial. And that's because that's drawn between the VORs. That's drawn between the Morro Bay VOR and the Gavieto VOR. So they're showing us our reference um, for our reference here. Conveniently, uh, it's showing us those radials. So now 126, how do we define that? Well, there's a knob right here on the CDI called OBS, and that stands for Omni Bearing Selector. So that means you can select any bearing using this. And we're going to go ahead and twist this until the 126 radial is at the top where this yellow arrow is pointed to. So when you first start turning this, and I'm turning it with my mouse wheel, it's going to jump 10 degrees at a time. If you click it, it'll also jump 10 degrees at a time. Sometimes it'll go one, but most of the time it seems to jump 10. To get it to go one degree at a time, the only option right now is to click and hold. So when I click and hold, it's going to jump 10, but then it's going to keep turning in smaller increments. So because we want a six at the end, I'm just going to turn it until we get to a six, just to set that up. And then we'll turn it 10 at a time after that. So I'm going to click and hold, and then let go when it's right around the six. I think I can get it a little bit closer. There we go. So that's probably a six right there. And now that I have the six dialed in, I can dial in the one at two. So it's one, two, six. So now I'm just going to use my mouse wheel and keep scrolling until I get to one, two, six. 
So one, two, six, right there. So that's pretty uh, precise. So now we've defined the radio that we want to use. And basically when we start flying, this needle right here will reflect if we are on course or not. So if the needle is to the right, we need to fly to the right. And if the needle is to the left, we need to fly to the left. So we'll do uh, more on that once we get flying, but I'm gonna go ahead and set my altimeter and then I'm gonna take off and we'll be on our way. All right, we have 40, 45, 50, and rotate. All right, we're up. Airspeed's good, we're gonna keep going. Pitch for 75 knots. There we go, 75, looking good. All right, continue for south departure. So now we're able to make our turn and we want to turn to 120. It's directly behind us. Go ahead and turn to the left to get out there. So now that we've taken off and we have the 126 radial set in our OBS, we want to track that radial outbound. So the first step is to turn to fly a heading of 126 so that we'll be flying parallel to the radial that we want to track. Okay, so now that we're at 120, or 126 roughly, and we see that the needle right here is to the right, we know that the radial is to our right. So we're flying parallel to that radial right now, but we want to intercept the radial. So now that we've been parallel, we're gonna to turn to intercept. And we generally do that at a 45 degree angle. So now we're at 45 degrees because right here, see this little notch right here, we have the 126, uh, marker right on that. So that means we are heading at a 45 degree angle to it. And so now what we'll watch for is for this needle right here on the CDI to come in to the center. And before it gets all the way to the center, we kind of want to roll back to that 126 heading so we don't overshoot it. But if we do overshoot it, we'll just turn right and then we'll be uh, going right back towards the needle. We'll just make small adjustments. And you'll see that you have to make those small adjustments throughout the flight. And it, it's nice to be at a 45 degree angle just because you really limit how fast that needle will move in. You want it to be coming in slow enough so that you can react to it. And like it is right now, since it's coming toward the middle, I'm gonna start banking to the left again to slow it down ever so slowly as it gets towards the middle. And we wanna make it so when it gets to the middle, we are on that 126 heading. That's how we'll make sure to not overshoot it. So it's coming in pretty quick now, so I'm gonna make sure to bank a little more, get over towards that 126 heading down here on our heading indicator. It's pretty centered, so I'm gonna go and turn us left to that 126 heading. And we're just gonna try to hold that heading. And now because there's winds, you know, wind will be pushing us left or right, slightly off course, we'll have to make small adjustments as we fly. So just keep your eye on the needle and make sure that we're actually going uh, on the right course. All right, so now that we're on route, let's talk about the to and from flag that shows up on the CDI right here. So because the CDI shows the needle in the middle, that means that we're tracking the radial. It shows a from flag because we are on a radial outbound from the VOR. We're heading from the Morro Bay VOR on the 126 radial. And we know we're on that radial because we've tuned the CDI to have the radial at the top. We're at the 126 radial at the top here. And when the needle is centered, that means that we are tracking that radial and we're on that course. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and change our frequency over to the Gaviota VOR, which is the one we're headed to. And when we change it, take a look at what happens to the CDI. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the frequency right now. And it reset, and now it's back on. So you may have noticed that the needle shifted a little bit more to the middle. The reason for that is that it's so much further away that it's less precise. So it's less sensitive. As we get closer and closer, it's gonna waver more to the left and right and be harder to keep in the middle the closer we get until eventually when we pass over the VOR, it'll go really hard to one side and then it'll come back into the middle. And you may have also noticed that the flag now flipped to say two. And that's indicating that we're heading towards the VOR, not away from it. So we're on the same heading and we're on the same 
track that we're following because we're basically drawing a straight line, our flight plan, from the Morro Bay VOR down to the Gaviota VOR. So of course, we're still right on track. When we were flying outbound from the Morro Bay VOR, we were actually on the 126 radial. Remember that you can think of them as kind of physically being in that location. Now that we've switched over to the Gaviota VOR, we need to talk about things in relation to the Gaviota VOR's radials. And we are not on the 126 radial of the Gaviota VOR. And that's because the 126 radial from the Gaviota VOR is located here at a 126 heading from the VOR. So what radial are we on right now? Well, if you just look at the one that's on the opposite side, that's the radial we're on right now. We're not on the 126, we're actually on the 306. So we can't possibly be on the 126 radial because the 126 radial is southeast of Gaviota VOR. What we need to remember is that when the two flag is shown and the needle is centered, we look at the bottom of the CDI to know what radial we were on, which in this case is the 306 radial. So what we're gonna do now is I've gotten a little bit off course, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn to the left. I'm gonna bring that needle back to the center. Keep on that 126 heading roughly, just keeping uh, going left and right as I need to to keep the needle centered. And now just checking our flight plan again, remember that when we get to and we actually pass over the VOR and we have that from flag, what we're gonna do is change our radial to 101. And when we follow the 101 radial, that will bring us directly over the Santa Barbara Airport. And then we can just visually land it from there. So you just saw the needle was on the left and I haven't changed my heading and now the needle's suddenly going far to the right. And that's because the VOR is now passing off our right side. So you can see it right there, it's gonna be slightly to the right of us. And now keep your eye on the flag here. The needle is all the way to the right and this flag is about to change to say from. Okay, there's the from flag. So now like we talked about before, because we have a from flag, we are now flying outbound from the Gaviota VOR on the radial that's at the top here, the 126 radial, because that's the one that goes southeast from the VOR. We were on the 306 inbound. Now that we've crossed over, we're on the 126 outbound from the VOR. So there's the airport there. And just for this exercise, I'm just gonna go ahead and change it. Even though we can visually see the airport right now, let's go ahead and change our CDI. Using the OBS knob, we'll change the 101 radial. So we're still from the Gaviota VOR, it's still behind us. But now instead of flying the, on the 126 radial, we're gonna fly on the 101 radial. That is how we figured we would get directly to the Santa Barbara airport is by flying on that radial. So again, I'm turning to intercept that radial. Because we're close to the VOR, the needle is going to move more quickly. And now I'm about to turn back to the right to get on that 102 heading. So the needle's in the middle. I turn back out to the 102 heading. So we track that radial outbound. And now when I level out, of course, the airport is directly in front of us, just like we planned. So, you know, if we were going much further, this airport or the next VOR we were headed to, we would once again just hold this course. We would keep the needle in the middle, fly this outbound radial 101, 102 to our next destination, which would be another VOR or an airport. And in this case, this was our last VOR that we needed to get to the Santa Barbara airport. We have it in sight, so we don't really need to use the VOR anymore. And we just need to contact the tower, get our clearance for landing and do the landing. So I hope this video gave you a good intro into how to fly using VORs and how they work. And as usual, if you have any comments, recommendations, suggestions, any of that, please leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll take a look. So thanks so much and I hope you found this useful. See you next time.